So what is shadow flicker and is it a real concern? You and I have an insatiable appetite for electricity. Come with me and we'll look at the issues relative to wind farms and the communities that they serve. This is The Wind Farm Guy. Hi, this is Dennis Doughton. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Wind Farm Guy. As wind development continues to expand into new areas, the industry realizes concerns with potential shadow flicker from wind turbines. Wind developers make being a good neighbor with host communities a priority and know the importance of working with communities on turbine siting to minimize potential impacts. The lion's share of homes within a project typically do not have any shadow flicker. So, what is shadow flicker? Well, shadow flicker occurs when the wind turbine blades pass between a home and the sun, casting a brief shadow that can result in flickering. However, it only occurs for a few hours per year cumulatively. Obviously, shadow flicker mostly happens at sunrise and sunset when the shadows are long due to the sun being low in the sky. The proximity of the turbine relative to a home affect the awareness and strength of the shadows. However, obstacles including trees, terrain, or other structures between the home and turbines can reduce or even eliminate shadow flicker altogether. Keep in mind that shadow flicker doesn't occur at night or when clouds or fog block the sun, or when turbines aren't operating. And, as the sun's position changes throughout the year, the likelihood of shadow flicker reduces even further during certain months. Shadow flicker can be minimized with thoughtful turbine sighting. With project design software, wind companies can calculate the time of shadow flicker in hours per year. These models incorporate pertinent information such as the turbine specs, home locations, topography, and weather data. Developers can often adjust turbine locations to reduce the shadow flicker. However, it is difficult to eliminate shadow flicker at all residences. A study funded by the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy investigated 15 wind farms to determine the impacts of shadow flicker on residents living within one mile of their nearest wind turbine. They found relatively few participants perceived shadow flicker on their property, particularly in the U.S. Another study in 2012 by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection in collaboration with the Massachusetts Department of Public Health commissioned a study that included a panel of independent experts to find any documented or even potential health impacts that could be correlated with exposure to wind turbines. That panel concluded that there is no scientific evidence to suggest that shadow flicker negatively affects health. Some claim that shadow flicker can increase risk of seizures in the small percentage of those people with photosensitive epilepsy. Of the people with epilepsy, photosensitive epilepsy affects approximately only 3% where flashing lights can trigger seizures. In addition, the Epilepsy Foundation reports, generally, flashing lights most likely to trigger seizures are between the frequency of 5 to 30 hertz, or 30 flashes per second. Hertz literally means how many times per second, so a frequency of 30 per second is identified as 30 hertz. The Massachusetts study found that for these individuals, shadow flicker from wind turbines does not pose a seizure risk due to the fact that shadow flicker from typical modern wind turbines occurs at frequencies between 0.3 and 1 hertz. Massachusetts Institute of Technology researchers also concluded shadow flicker poses negligible risk to developing a photoepileptic seizure. 
My personal experience is that the typical utility scale three blade rotor has only about a dozen RPMs, meaning one of the blades is in a particular position about every two seconds, which is 0.5 hertz. You could double that if you want, and it is still only one per second, far from the concerning frequency described by the Epilepsy Foundation. The industry realizes that neighboring residents could be concerned about shadow flicker. Throughout the United States, a common regulatory target is 30 hours per year at homes, which is less than 0.3% of annual daylight hours. The target of 30 hours per year is based on a realistic scenario, taking into account cloud cover and operational data. This 30-hour target represents an acceptable balance of those wishing to host turbines on their land and their neighbors. And it means homes in proximity to wind turbines will not experience shadow flicker 99.7% of the year. Therefore, the wind industry recommends a limit of no less than 30 hours per year at a non-participating home. If you like what we've discussed today, please click like and subscribe below. If you have thoughts or want me to address a particular topic relative to wind farms, please leave me a comment. Finally, in an independent study completed with the support of the Wind Energy Technologies Office of the U.S. Department of Energy, modeled shadow flicker exposure at nearly 35,000 residences across 61 wind projects in the United States. 747 of which were also survey respondents. As you would expect, they found that perceived shadow flicker is primarily an objective response to the flicker exposure and the distance to the closest turbine. Interestingly though, there were also correlations with whether the respondent moved in after the wind project was built. Conversely, and this is the big discovery, shadow flicker annoyance was not significantly correlated with actual shadow flicker exposure. Rather, shadow flicker annoyance is primarily a subjective response to perceived wind turbine aesthetics, or do they like the way they look? Other sounds, meaning existing ambient sounds, the respondent's level of education, which the higher the education, the higher the opinion of wind turbines, and even the respondent's age. People are generally change averse, and age increases that. Are you putting this together? In Dennis's words, three things come together here. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Two, people basically cha are change averse. And three, whether a person is predisposed to dislike wind turbines. The confluence of these three things increases the likelihood of shadow flicker annoyance, not the actual shadow flicker exposure. This is Dennis Stout, and I'm the Wind Farm Guy. Thank you for watching. Working together, we can make good energy decisions and save our planet. I am the Wind Farm Guy.